here. Well, here we are with the final install. You can see we've got the uh, altitude motor on with uh, some very nice wire wrap and clips taking that uh, into the bottom of the rock box. Wire hanging there is the hand pad controller, which I set up with some Velcro uh, so that it can sit there and not move around. And inside the rocker box, you can see where that wire comes out and it goes over to the rest of the system. Uh, along that way, the back of the serial cap motor, uh, the pewter, and I've also got a uh, seven and a half amp hour battery that I keep in the rocker box and charge off my car battery. It actually has a little charging circuit uh, on off switch. I have a splitter on there for a couple of the other things that I use, a fan motor and a, uh, the, the power to the electron, and they're all separate so I can pull them in and out. I uh, just have powered a different thing. In the front of the box here, you can see the uh, servo cut uh, drive system computer. And I'm going to eventually put this on a little rack like this. enough room that the, the, uh, the box can down and miss that. And the way I can see the lights and everything will be a little farther forward. Uh, you can see I remove out those wires and then the, uh, the azimuth drive system here. And so what we're going to do now, uh, I'm not really set the telescope, but that's why lens cover's on, or the mirror, mirror cover. And everything on and right now we're just gonna set up uh, fakey using sky commander about where the north star would be and about where uh sirius would be and uh show you how the drive system works okay so what we're gonna do now is fake line on uh, polaris and sirius so i'm telling the computer that this is polaris and i'll hit enter and it's asking for the second star i'm gonna go to sirius so i'll bring the scope around and we'll uh I'll tell it Sirius is up over here, and uh, tell it there, and then we'll just for fun test this, and we'll go to say, uh, let's go to uh, NGC four five sixty five, one of my favorite galaxies, and then it's telling one hundred and one degrees uh, counterclockwise and thirty three degrees down. So we'll go to on Sky Commander. And I'll move the scope down. Oh! Brilliant. I did not uh, lock any of the clutches. That clutch was just barely locked, so I'll hit the all stop here. Now I'll lock down the clutches. <laughs> and now let's get the go to, and it should just swing it around here. Now it's just uh, swing around here in, uh, in uh, Adamus. Oh, that, I didn't merge stop, so I got him pushing a direction. There we go. Wow, it's low. It's going to look terrible here in daylight. <laughs> I've got this set up right now to swing around about 5 degrees a second, which is, is pretty amazingly fast for this big a telescope. Uh, and it's going to come around here to where it thinks Combernices is. Bernices. That's about where it should be. And we want to do something else like uh, M51 here. Just up just a little bit around a few more degrees. It should be very much the inverse. Click down to about zero. We'll do uh, at 80, 81. You can watch the inverse on Sky Commander. Click down until they get to where they're supposed to be. It's going to slowly move over and down. Crack the Twin Inch Beach that's coming over. <laughs> Alright. So that's how the servo cat system works. Works very well. Uh, it tracks fantastically. Um, the end all was pretty straightforward. Uh, I did a lot of little extra touches with all the wiring. I used a, a nice wire wrap and a nice uh, stay system on there. Drilled some nice holes and included uh, plug holes that were very nice. The hole plugs uh, were very nice. On the system. Still don't get the track pad wire all worked out. What I'm gonna do is put a, uh, another piece of Velcro probably right up here uh, next to the eyepiece to let that wire kind of dangle. This out of the way. Sometimes I just throw it <laughs> up on top of the uh, the, uh, the light shroud. Uh, it works pretty well there also. Uh, no one really trips on it. I've done a couple of public star parties and uh, everything's been fantastic. But the, uh, the real beauty is just the uh, motion of the motors. The sound is incredible. It's, it's quiet enough that it doesn't really disturb people, but you know they can hear it moving and they know something is different. And uh, it's just an amazing piece of work. I'm very pleased with it. I'm pleased with how it went together. I might I might have changed a couple things. 
uh, when I was installing it, I might have uh, this motor a little bit closer to the uh, to the sideboard. Um, I might have done things a little bit differently on the install that would have made it a little bit faster to do, but overall, uh, it went very well and was very easy to do. The instructions were clear. I had to email or uh, call a couple questions, and uh, overall, I'm, I'm deeply satisfied. Just for fun, let's go to M42 here. That's kind of the last little little drive around. And now, of course, we're looking at the Orion Nebula. Okay, now we're looking at the Orion Nebula. One last little skip there. And we're locked in at zero. Thanks a lot, Gary. I love the product. Uh, it's going to be a fantastic addition to the scope. Um, the battery, the other night when I was using it, I had about six hours uh, on the battery. And uh, it, the lights that I've got on the battery go from yellow to red, green. And it kept a green light uh, almost the entire night which tells me that it didn't get much be below uh, 11 and a half volts so uh, for six hours of tracking and go-toing and in part of that we're running the fan so really really amazing thing thanks a lot